In mid-March, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the World Health Organization announced the presence of a novel coronavirus in the Arabian Peninsula and the United Kingdom. To learn more about this novel coronavirus and what healthcare providers need to know about it, we sat down with Dr. Matthew Binneker, the laboratory director of the Mayo Clinic Virology Laboratory. We started off by asking him to provide a little bit more background about the novel coronavirus. So there are many serotypes of uh, coronavirus, and when we become infected with the common types of the virus, symptoms are generally mild, and we experience a cold-like syndrome that typically lasts about one week. But sometimes these viruses can mutate and acquire traits that make them more virulent. And that's the case with a recent novel coronavirus that's been detected in 15 patients over the past 12 months. Most of these patients have experienced severe acute respiratory illness, and nine of the 15 individuals, or about 60%, have actually died from the infection. So there's obviously something unique about this strain of virus. It's important to point out that the majority of the patients that have been infected with this virus are from the Middle East, and no cases have been reported yet in the United States. The World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recently established a case definition of possible novel coronavirus infection. What are some of the key aspects of the case definition that providers should know? So during the very early stages of the illness, um, it may be challenging for healthcare providers to distinguish between the novel coronavirus infection and other common respiratory diseases like influenza. This is because patients with the novel coronavirus have developed primarily a respiratory illness characterized by fever and cough in most of the cases. So these aren't very specific symptoms. And because of this, it's important for providers to gather some more information. So first, is there a high suspicion that the patient has pneumonia or severe respiratory distress? And this is usually determined based on clinical features as well as uh, obtaining a chest x-ray. And second, and probably most important at this time, is has the patient traveled to the Middle East within the past 10 days? Or have they been in close contact with a sick person who has recently visited that area? And then finally, have other more common infections like influenza or RSV been ruled out? Each of these factors should be taken into consideration when evaluating an individual with possible novel coronavirus infection. If a provider suspects a novel coronavirus infection, what should they do? Well, if a patient meets each of the case definition criteria that we just discussed, which again are the appropriate clinical symptoms, evidence of pneumonia or severe respiratory distress, recent travel history to the Middle East, and no other diagnosis, then the first thing a healthcare provider should do is place that patient in the appropriate isolation precautions and then contact their state health lab or the CDC. These public health labs will be able to evaluate the patient's clinical and travel history and then arrange for lab testing if they determine that it's necessary. Samples for viral culture from suspected cases of novel coronavirus should not be sent to Mayo Clinic. Can you clarify what testing should continue to be sent to reference laboratory partners? Well, if there's a high degree of suspicion for a case of novel coronavirus infection, we're asking that providers do not submit samples to our laboratory or other uh, clinical laboratories for viral culture. And this is because once we grow the virus in culture, it can pose a serious health risk to our lab staff. You need to take a certain high level of precaution when working with this virus 
and that's best suited for a lab like the one at CDC. However, clinical labs can continue to perform rule-out testing for other more common respiratory infections like influenza or RSV using molecular tests like PCR. And this is because when these molecular tests are performed, the lab won't be growing the virus, but instead they'll be inactivating the virus, isolating its RNA or its genome, and then using certain tests to detect whether the virus is present or not. Dr. Benneker, do you have any additional thoughts on what providers should know about novel coronavirus testing? I think it's most important uh, at this point for doctors and lab staff just to be aware that a novel coronavirus has been detected. It has a high mortality rate, um, but right now cases seem to be limited primarily to the Middle East and then several cases have also occurred in the United Kingdom. Another important point that I should make is that although this new virus comes from the same family as the SARS virus, which we saw back in 2003, the CDC has determined that it's not the same virus. And then finally, I just reiterate that if a provider sees a patient with severe respiratory disease who's recently traveled to the Middle East, the best thing that they can do is contact their state health lab or the CDC and those agencies will be able to help determine whether specific testing for the novel coronavirus is needed.